Well, we're working on a project now. It doesn't pay any money, but it's long overdue. We put this loft in this building. Oh, right I put it in there before this addition here was done. This was built in 04 on the end of this old, just a storage building, and we used this end for a shop. Put that area in just to gain some storage, and it has gotten out of hand. We have gotten, or we have put too much stuff up there, and we've decided to clean it out. There's an area that goes in above the office. So we're bringing everything down from that whole area there. We're gonna do that, tear all that down, take the stuff off there, that is. And then we're gonna go through everything that we have right there. Everything that's on the floor here, you see, was up <laughs> on that mezzanine there. So it's a wonder that it hadn't come down, you know that? But it's already come up. Has it? <laughs> yeah, look at the look at the ceiling height that we've gained there. <laughs> So we ought to be able to gain, or we ought to be able to get like 20 or 30 videos out of this cleanup of the shop. There's probably things over there that no one's ever seen before. Yep. <clears throat> One might think that's a snowmobile track, but that is a belt to the vac truck, or the sand truck. I'm gonna get this tractor out of here, pull the chopper, and I'm gonna work on the chopper. Well, these guys are tearing this stuff down. So we've got a scrap pile that we're gonna work on and yeah. Got a aluminum toolbox here that I was gonna put on the service truck years ago and never did. So that's brand new, still in the box. We need to that long. Well, it's a it's an underbody. The door opens the opposite way. Well, they've got everything off of the mezzanine and they're starting to put stuff back up there again. But everything you see here is what was up on top of that area there. This stuff here wasn't, but all of this stuff included. We've got stall parts, we've got tractor parts, we've got truck parts that, oh, auger parts, Degelman blade parts, you name it, it was up there. There's a hitch to a chopper right there. Um, tarp parts, stuff like that. Just uh, a whole slew of stuff that, it was just piled up here. We're really surprised that it didn't pull this down. But this area here is above the office and that was stacked about full. And uh, like I said, they're just starting to put stuff back up here again. Just if we keep the junk down to a minimum, we can keep things organized a little better but we had stuff we should have walked you couldn't even walk up here could you there's a tiny little path um, on this section here we've got it set up so that we could put pallets up here because there's posts but from oh that's the last post there from there down we should have had just light stuff up here and it wasn't that way at all so we've got some old truck parts here that came off of a couple of jared's trucks when they lost weight we've got another some other parts here i've got a a bumper in this uh box here that goes to a 2014 Ram from when I hit a deer. Those are the old fender flares of mine. We've got some radiator parts here that went to a truck. 
old four-wheeler tires, um, struts and whatever for a, from a half-ton Chevy pickup that Jared had that he put a lift kit in and took this stuff out. And you've got some of the uh, items that were involved in the weight loss program on one of his trucks there and some other stuff right there. So, some stuff here is going to be going in the scrap truck. We've got stall parts, curtain parts, you name it. So, truck air tanks, more truck air tanks, garbage, garbage, garbage. Well, things are slowly getting organized. We are putting some stuff back up there. But the junk, the stuff that was junk has made its way out of here for the most part. We've got a pile of power shafts over here. Jared's trying to sort them out. They go to bush hogs and uh, tetters and rakes and whatever like that. We've got a pair of fenders here that went to the 544 loader they were small ones and we had larger ones put on i don't think we're going to be using them i throw them out nate's got a roller chain that we should build a rack for to put on to have it on a rack um that would make things this bush handier hog. there this bush hog shaft must be junk it must be bent or twisted because the other half is right there oh okay you must take it off or... yeah i don't remember and we are doing a full service stopper here i've got that dust collection blower fan assembly that I'm gonna dive into here in a little while. I'm gonna actually put a whole brand new one on. Everything is gonna be brand new. The shaft, the fan itself, the housing, the whole nine yards because we had that problem with the um, unit breaking that bracket a couple of different times. So we're gonna start over and uh, have it all brand new. It's about 80 hours away from an oil change, so I have decided to just go ahead and drop the oil, replace the filters, and then this will be ready for hay once we put it away. Well, we're getting the oil in this chopper here. We're gonna be doing some other work to that too, like I had talked about earlier. We'll kind of show you everything as it looks here currently at the moment. We've got everything kind of reorganized upstairs here. We'll kind of take a little walk up here. Now this area here is above the office and we've got a nice walkway down through here now to where we can actually access things. We had so much stuff up here that you couldn't even walk up here on this mezzanine we've got tart parts in this crate here overhead door parts in that pail right there we've got a four foot aluminum underbody toolbox here this pallet's for the vac truck and the mench sand truck we've got some roller chain on this pallet we need to build a like a roller chain stand, like here's a spool here, one there, one there. Um, there's one, uh, what do we got? We've got 60, 80, 100, 120. And there's some 40 there. I don't know if we've, we've got to have some 50 there somewhere, but um, yeah, we need to build something like that. Here's some truck parts in this crate. And these are older tractor parts here. And these are the toolboxes that come on the tractors. We've got a, a PTO guard here. 
that goes to a tractor and then we've got one of these old wrenches here how long has it been since you've seen one of these wrenches this is an actual tractor wrench it's for the older style John Deere tractors like the 4020s up through to the 4450 4455s for uh, the rear wheels uh, adjusting rear wheels and doing the uh, front axle setting your width and this here is a bunch of parts from Jared's trucks it's it was a uh, it was from his weight loss uh, <laughs> reduction kit that he put into it. I've got some fender flares here if anybody wants them for a 2014 three quarter ton Dodge truck. So we'll want, run over to the chopper here and we'll kind of explain what we need to do to it. We've got oil pumping in here and it holds 66 quarts, so we better just glance at this quick, see how far in we are. We are 26 quarts in. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to change out this blower assembly here. If you recall, this bracket has broke on us three times now. This one is welded. I had uh, all kinds of uh, suggestions as far as um, you know build a better bracket what have you there's not a lot of area there to fabricate anything that's gonna really work and then I also had comments to where geez you can't run that rigid well that belts pretty good and tight and it is what it is so we're going to replace the uh, shaft and blower assembly I don't know if I'm, I don't think I'm gonna replace the housing but we're gonna put new bearing shaft and impeller on it and then the bracket um, for this is up been updated so I don't know what that's gonna look like hopefully it's beefier than uh, the one that's on there the other thing that I've got left to do here is we have to replace or add um replace some pickup head teeth we've got a couple of them missing all of these pickup head teeth were new last year we did a lot of work to this head last winter so we've got a little bit of work cut out for us not much uh, here are up to 37 quarts and i also got some items in the mail here from mark mendenhall from a dealership down in uh, Florida Everglades equipment group he ended up sending a whole box of hats here got a John Deere hat in there for you a pink one? yeah you want to wear a pink one <laughs> so he wanted to make sure that we took advantage of the chopper days promotion our dealership does do that chopper day promotion and it looks like they're gonna run theirs between January and March they just need to pick a month I'm not sure which month they're gonna pick our dealership does do a promotion for chopper parts that are discounted during the winter months here um, if your dealer doesn't get a hold of Everglades equipment so thanks to Mark for sending these hats to us so I better tend to business or I'm gonna end up with too much oil in this chopper here I replaced the coolant filter I've got to make sure I turn that valve back on and uh, we better get to work here well we have this blower assembly removed it's sitting over on the bench the bracket that bolted up on top of here that kind of supported everything that is broke as well we'll show you what that looks like I don't know what caused this to break but uh, we'll have to get this unit here welded back together we have the blower assembly sitting here I have a new fan that we're gonna put on 
Uh, I don't see anything wrong really with the old one. There is a little bit of plastic wore off of the fins here. We don't know if maybe it's just not balanced correctly and it just creates like a, I don't know if you'd call it a harmonic balance, uh, vibration or what. But we're gonna replace that. I've got a new shaft here. Again, it's gonna be hard to tell whether that old shaft is bent or not. There is a little bit of movement here uh, in this housing. I was able to see it uh, when it was on the chopper. I don't know if that movement is somewhat normal or not, but at any rate, we're gonna go ahead and replace the fan, the shaft, new bearings. We'll get this bracket welded and the other bracket uh, I had to order and that was subbed over to another part. Now I ended up, I had a dentist appointment here yesterday afternoon and I had to have a checkup on my leg. So I was in and out of the shop here yesterday and didn't didn't film much of this project but this is our older diller uh trailer this is an 8,000 gallon tanker this tra uh, trailer we bought in 2012. they're replacing air tanks on it we're going to do brakes we've got to throw some miscellaneous tires on there i shouldn't say mis miscellaneous we're going to put for the most part, we're gonna put brand new tires on it, save the ones that are decent. Like this would work in the event that you had a flat or something, and it'd work if you wanted a spare. But we are replacing the hydraulic lines on it. The hydraulic lines go through the tank. So they end up going up to the front so that they can be supplied with oil from the tractor and then the road tractor, and then the oil comes back here to power the fan to propel the manure out of the tank and into another tanker or when your field spreading. These pipes are rusted. We are worried that we might potentially blow one of them. Uh, I ended up ordering some new pipe. I've got some one inch schedule 80 coming today This appears to be Schedule 40 which you can get away with schedule 40, but um, it's not advisable I've got some 90 degree fittings. We'll have to have a 90 for uh, The rear here to come down to hook our hoses to um and a 90 up front maybe we'll just put a regular coupler on uh, the back here I'm not sure what we're gonna do there but I've got uh, some couplers as well these are schedule 80 these are good for 3,000 PSI now I had to buy a new pipe threader from Harbor Freight that unit there was 160 bucks we've got another one over on the floor over there but it um, the motors burned up in it I was gonna buy a Milwaukee but just the tool with the batteries without the dies was eighteen hundred and some dollars the Milwaukee cordless threader complete with the dies is twenty two hundred and we really don't do all that much but that did come with 12 amp hour 18 volt batteries as cordless unit and it would definitely Lasts longer than this unit here, but when we put airline all the way around the shop, I was able to use that pipe threader for that, and I've threaded pipe for uh, filter oil returns on trucks. I don't know how many threads I did with it, but we were doing one inch and inch and a quarter, and it uh, it did pretty good for that. So for 160 bucks, I think we'll. We'll just keep burning these up and running them. So let's go ahead and get our fan together. And then I also had pickup head teeth that came yesterday and we could try to wrap this job up here.
Well, we've got this guy here apart, and this was the movement that I was talking about. And what it is, the bearings are moving in the housing here. I don't know if that's enough to make a difference. If I didn't see uh, the brackets cracking and breaking, I would I would say that no, it's not a it shouldn't make a difference. But the pulley went on this end, the fan went on this end here. Like I said, we're going to replace the shaft and uh, put new bearings on it. So we've got a snap ring on each side of this housing to hold the bearings in there. And uh, actually there's a snap ring just on the other side. So everything's got to go out through that way. Made in the USA. You don't see that too often. So we'll go ahead and pull this apart. Like I said, I've got a shaft. I've got some bearings here. I've got all the goodies that it's going to take to get this back together with new parts. We've got the C5 in here putting some ABS brake valves on it. We had to put a new tire on this forklift here a little while ago. We're kind of doing about eight jobs at once. And they're working on this Diller trailer. They're in the inside of it. And you can see it is dusty in here. Jared and Nate are inside. They've got a bin fan pulling air out. And they're working in there with, uh, well, they've got masks on, of course. They've got all light headlights on in there. And then this. Is what they've taken off of the walls of that tank so far. Alright, today is not probably making for too great of a video here. There's hammering and wire wheeling and fans running in the other shop. But we've got this apart. Here is the old shaft bearings. We've got new bearings, even got new hardware to put this together, new keyways. So we'll get this all put back together. I'm even going to put it together with some Loctite. I'll put some Loctite on these bearings. And maybe that'll keep them in there and won't allow them to move at all. But uh, we'll just have to see how it goes here. This is all we can do. We can just replace the parts and hopefully it keeps from breaking that bracket again now i did go and order the new shroud halves but we're not going to need those i was worried that there could have possibly been a bearing gone in here and i worried about the fan getting all wallered up and eating the housing but the housing is fine so even if there was something wrong with the housing outside of it having holes in it if it was off kilt or something it's not going to bother the fan because the fan does not come into contact with that at all so let's go ahead and get this back together we can get this bracket welded and we've got to see when that other bracket is going to uh, get here this is the ABS valve that um, sarge took off the c5 they've got two of them they're going to replace and they have just kind of been eaten by the salt here so well let's continue putting this together well kind of boring that's what it looks like all back together so we might as well set this up bolts all in around that i can hold that bracket get it back together again we don't know if this is bent or not i don't know how it could get bent but we're we've replaced it
So we'll just have to see how it goes. We put Loctite on the new bearings. They were a little sloppy in that housing. I imagine if I go ahead and order a new housing, they might be a little sloppy in that too. So we'll just have to try this and see how it goes. Well, we've got this blower assembly back together and it's kind of just setting into place there. The bolts that go around the fan housing itself are just setting in there. I've got to tighten them up yet. I've got the bracket setting on the bench that goes from here over to kind of support this unit. That was all cracked and broken. The other bracket we're waiting for, and that is this one here. Ouch. This one goes in there, something like this. Kind of holds, well, it goes up underneath there and then the actual hydraulic motor which is right here that bolts to the other half of it this uh plate here that's set between the fan housing and the blower housing assembly itself this has got some wear to it we ended up replacing it um, i did buy all of the the plastic pieces that are on the chopper i've got new pieces in the event that oh in the event that it kind of started to eat itself and the fan did get into this a little bit so we replaced this one probably when that bracket broke it allowed that fan to move enough to where it rubbed on that there so this here is the bracket that comes off of the frame that comes over and it holds that fan assembly up this was cracked, so we're gonna go ahead and weld this back together and uh, get some factory paint on there and then we can bolt that into place once the paint dries. We've got a few more pickup head teeth to put on there. These pickup head teeth were all brand new. Uh, last year we ended up, uh, I had said it earlier, we had rebuilt the head earlier on once we get that done we can get the head off and i've got some pieces that i want to replace that hold the uh door shut on the on the cutter head and we'll get into that in a little while here so let's get some welding done and then we can maybe paint this i don't know if i want to clamp this or not We can probably just hold it by hand and just tack weld it, and that'll be good enough. So we've got this welded back together, but I'm going to have to put a piece on here to fill this in, being that that broke uh, right there. When they made this, it's multiple pieces of steel put together. 
A lot of what you'll see when you see factory welds, they're welded in stitches. They do stitch welding. And the reason why you do, there's a couple of different reasons why you do that. One, if you weld a continuous weld, it makes it so damn rigid that you'll get fatigue cracks. The other reason why they do a minimal amount of welding is to save on time. And then you could see this here is kinda, they've taken some material out to make this piece a little lighter. As you see here, this is a continuous weld there. That needs to be welded completely there. Just like what you see on this side here. And then when you come down through this piece, even if these holes weren't here, you'd be better off to stitch it. A little here, there, so on and so forth. The same thing with this welded on the other side. If they welded up through here, it would actually make this piece weak because you would have so much weld in a, in a small area that you might run the risk of penetrating in too far and this could rip right out of this form piece of quarter inch material. Now, on this end here, I welded all the way across here. That's how it should be welded completely. However, on this side, they only have one little stitch. So this is gonna crack just like the other side did. I'm assuming that that's all they had on that other side was just one little small stitch like that. Uh, as you can see, there is nothing welded on this uh, inner portion here. There's just one little tack in that corner there and there is nothing welded uh, down in there. So this bracket would probably break there next and I'm guessing as to reason why this broke was for that reason. It probably broke here first, then it was holding from this side and it caused it just to, to flex too much and it broke it. So we're gonna put a little more material in here just because of the way this side broke. I'm gonna lay a piece of rod down in there, or a piece of flat stock or something, just to kind of stiffen this up or just put something over the outside and that should be good enough. Well, we've got this bracket all welded back together and I threw a quick coat of paint on it. So we'll get that bolted into place while we were painting that and waiting for the paint to dry. We ended up replacing what pickup head teeth the, the head needed. I had some loose ones. We tightened them up so everything should be good there. We'll get that bracket on. I need to put the compressor sheet down, get the head off, and then we've got to open up the door for the um, cutter head, the feed rolls, and we've got some stuff to uh, do there. The one bracket that we need, we don't have that one that's going to take the place of that so we're just going to have to kind of leave the motor hanging like this and we won't get that until next week so we'll have to get this done and then we can if we so choose we can pull it out of here and all we would have to do is just put that one bracket back on and then refasten the panel so we might as well get this on there, get our head off, and we can do the other job here. Well, we've done as much as we can do with that blower assembly there. We're waiting for some parts. I had to put the panel down into place so that I could get in and out of the cab. We've got the head off now. I've got this um, feed roll door open. And this is the one last thing I'm going to do to this chopper right here, right now. And that is, we're going to go ahead and replace this J-hook here. This comes up underneath all this tube on the head here when you swing it shut. 
There's one on the other side too. There's a rod that goes across right here and it kind of locks that in place. And then there's another lock up top here. The pins push out into those square holes there. Uh, I usually just put a 15, 16 socket on this fixed bolt here and just run that out and it turns it up into place. This summer, I thought it was getting to the point where something was starting to strip out and I worried about it failing, so I ordered new parts and then after that, it of course worked fine. So we've got this piece here is new. Uh, that's threaded. This 16 millimeter bolt goes through that to uh, kind of turn that back and forth. We've got the new parts in the box here. So this is shaped like that. And uh, that's what you see there. And then this, of course, is the uh, tube that sets in this here. So we'll have to thread that out, knock this roll pin off, get things kind of put into place, thread the bolt up through there, and we should be in good shape. I've also got a jaw, or I have a jaw for the other side. It, it almost looks as though these might slightly be stretched a little bit. I don't know if you could kind of see that or not. Maybe they're not, but it appears that this might be stretched a little bit. I'm not sure. Pro it probably isn't. But in order to replace this threading mechanism, we have to replace both of these pieces. So we'll go ahead and swap this out quick. And then that is going to do it for now on this chopper. And then we'll have to get into doing the rest of the work here once we see some more parts. Well, we've got these new parts on there. However... The hook for the other side, which I thought was this piece here, is completely wrong. Um, this is too small. And it doesn't appear that there is anything wrong with that piece um, on the other side. So this is the tube here. That sets in there. And then this piece is left-handed thread. And it turns up through... Uh, this, well, it's a heavy wall tube with a solid piece welded into it that has the threads in it. And then, of course, there's a grease circ in there as well. Now, I got a little worried here this summer. I thought the threads were stripping off of either the threaded part or I didn't know if maybe the threads were coming out of this would be this would be the nut part and as it turns out neither one of them have any problems but um, no one had this in stock and we would have been several days uh, getting one if we were down and out so we'll go ahead and get this closed up I think you can kind of see how this works and kind of understand it but we've got the door is open we'll kind of show you how this works it's pretty well self-explanatory And then there is another locking mechanism right here. And then what this does is it just pushes 
either pin the right pin to the right and the left pin to the left it kind of just pushes it and you can kind of see how that's done now the feed roll assembly is locked on and i guess that is gonna about do it for this project for right now uh, we could show you what the weather looks like outside uh, it was 42 degrees here this morning and it is now down to like 12 degrees we brought the spreader inside we anticipate having to clean with the skid steer tomorrow and load manure direct into it uh, rather than being able to clean the heifer barns with the uh, vac truck we're also um, having to run generators we've got this one inside this tractor here doesn't have a block heater on it so uh, we thought we would just leave it in the shop we've got two generators this size here this is a 100 kw and then we have another generator up to the parlor that's a 100 kw and that is inside the building the 8360 is hooked to that and then we've got a generator across the road for the heifer barns and then we've got another one that we take down the road for uh the spring it's kind of dark out here now and you can kind of see that it is a little windy so i know i've had comments in the past saying why don't you just get one big huge generator well that would be ideal but we can't run anything with one big generator and the reason being is because we have a couple of different services that come into the parlor and um we just can't do it that way so we have to set a, uh, the generators up to be able to milk we need two of them we need to set them up at two different locations and one big generator wouldn't work this is a different service on the other side of the road and where we get our water from is a half a mile down the road and you lose a lot of amps running power through long wires so uh you can see there's a lot of dust on the side of the chopper and that is because jared and nate have been working on that tanker there so that'll just go into storage with all that dust on there and then when we get it out next summer we'll just wash it off with some soap and water and it'll all be fine so that is gonna do it for this video i want to thank you for watching and we will catch you at the next video